just get started since it's actually now time. Uh, I'm Rob Walsh. I've been podcasting for eight years. I started podcasting in 2004. Uh, my initial podcast was called Podcast 411, which is a podcast about interviewing other podcasters. At the time I started, it was about 100 podcasts. There wasn't many people doing it. So I figured out, oh, it'll last me a while. And now there's, well, we'll get to those numbers in a minute. Uh, I actually have another podcast that I do now on a more regular basis called Today in iOS, which is about iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch. Can you guys? Turn, yeah, turn off the speakers. Turn It's actually... <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just playing the live stream. Maybe I just disconnected. Yeah. Your connection? Well, you just muted it. It's not on the speaker. It's not speakers. That's connected. Oh, you mute the actual computer. No. no. Oh. There we go. Just killing the laptop. Doing. <laughs> it's a PC. Um, the last five years, I have worked for Libsyn, which is the largest podcast hosting company, uh, which is here. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me, Rob at Lipson.com is the best way to get my email. My Twitter is at Podcast411. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at forward slash Podcast411. Lipson, uh, we used to have a tough ticker symbol to remember. It was WZD. But we've now changed that to the uh, symbol for good luck in China, which is Foo. <laughs> so yes, our ticker symbol is F. <laughs> I look at it when you're in new media, there's the new media groups, which are bloggers, audio podcasters, YouTubers, video podcasters versus newspapers, magazines, radio, TV. You've got new media versus traditional media. Obviously, this is traditional media. This is us here, new media folks. Uh, <laughs> now, everyone laughs about how you want to be the dinosaur, except if you're one-on-one -on -one with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, you got a big bite. Uh, so what you need is weapons to fight this guy. <laughs> Uh, so, well, good weapons are social media. So social media, Twitter, Facebook, that's your weapons in the new, the new media fight. And what you guys are fighting over is eyeballs and ears. Uh, you're trying to get audience. You both want audience. Why do you want audience? To either get out your message or make uh, monetize uh, your shows. Um, the one big difference between um, real dinosaurs and traditional media, they actually can use the same social media tools as you so that dinosaurs are shooting back. Just remember that when you're fighting against them. How many people here are bloggers? Bloggers, bloggers, come on. If you've blogged, come on, you're raising your hand. All right. Pretty much at this point, it's like saying, are you a human? It's, I mean, it's, everybody's blogging. So here's a little video I, I like on this subject. In a web world of 24 7 stress, writers blog till they drop. So, can blogging really kill you? Are bloggers being worked to death? <laughs> we talked to one blogger about his situation and working conditions. So, I was living in Hoboken, New Jersey, and I met this guy, and he said that I could get a job in New York City and, and live there, too. And I said I just couldn't afford it. But he said he paid for me to come there as long as I blog off my debt. He blindfolded me, put me in the trunk of a car, and smuggled me through the hall and tunnel. <laughs> We're standing outside a blogging facility. We're about to go in and find out what's happening behind this very door. Come along. Keep blogging. Why aren't you blogging? <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, we'd like to ask you, turn that off. We'd just like to ask you a few questions about the filming here. You can't film in here. Turn it he, off. He turned it off. You can turn it off. Turn it. He, he I turned. know he didn't turn it off. The red light's still on. No, no, it's off. It's your. Go ahead. You can turn it. Start blogging again. <laughs> Sir, how that these people slept? How much money do you make blogging? Well, I haven't really been able to pay back what I owe, so I guess I haven't really made any money. But I paid in bread and Red Bull. <laughs> Give me a here. I need you to Turn the camera off. And have you gone to the police about this? I, I made blogs about it. I've been blogging and telling the police the police to come and save me, but I guess no one subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to go home. <laughs> 
Well, what's funny about that video one is Next New Networks actually got purchased by YouTube, so they actually cashed out pretty well. Um, but where he says no one subscribed, the average blog, only about three subscribers for the average blog out there. Um, I would say, you know, you want to stand out, and people ask why you should podcast. And I would say a good reason why you should podcast is it's a way to stand out. There's over 181 million blogs out there, active blogs that are being tracked. There's only 200,000 active podcasts. That's a 905 to 1 ratio. For everybody blogging about a certain subject, either, either whatever the subject might be, food, whatever it is, there's 905 of those bloggers to every one podcast. So you want to stand out from your peers, podcasting is a great way to do that. Now you might say, well, that's because there's less people that are consuming podcasts. Well, not really. Not that much less. It's about a 4 to 1 ratio. Average podcast is a much more subscribers and listeners than the average blog, and I'll get to those numbers later on. Um, but again, about 42% of Americans read blogs, over 10% of Americans download podcasts each month. One of the things about blogs is people want to monetize it, and they want to put ads around it, and they, you know that's how you make your money. You put these ads around it, and and, and that's good in theory. But the problem is when people actually come to your website, this is what they actually see. They see the article. They don't see the ads. They don't remember the ads. How many people can remember the ads that were around the last blog post they read? But when I'm here talking to you and you're hearing the audio hook in a podcast, and I say go to tii.hover.com and get 10% off your domain name registrations, you remember that. You hear that. You can't avoid that. That's the beauty of the podcast. Whether it's audio or video, the ad is hit, hits you. You can't avoid it. It's part of the content. It's not around the content, yet it's in the content. That makes it more monetizable. It makes it more attractive to certain advertisers. One of the things, too, about podcasting, because it's in your ear, I'm going to talk mostly about audio here. It's a much more intimate medium, more time to consume podcasts. When you're driving here today, you could actually have been listening to a podcast. You couldn't be reading a blog. You couldn't be watching a video podcast. But people say, well, Rob, you say it's more loyal audience. What do you mean by that? There's a podcast out there called Keith and the Girl. And they have over 100 of their listeners that have branded their logo <laughs> on their bodies with tattoos. That's loyal. Now you might go, that's crazy. Oh, you don't know how crazy it is. Because see this Keith and the Girl here, this is Keith and Hemda. Keith and Hemda uh, were dating, and the show is about Keith and Hemda dating. So people have the tattoo Keith and Hemda holding hands. So, Keith is now marrying another girl, and Hemda is dating another girl. So <laughs> Keith and Hemda are no longer dating, but there's people that have that brand. Now the show is still going on, so Keith and the Girl is still out there. And they're still getting people that are still branding Keith and the Girl tattoos on their bodies to this day. Over a hundred of them. Now, one of the things too about podcasting, people have this stereotypical view of what they think the typical podcaster looks like. And they kind of think, this is what the typical podcaster looks like. Now, I want to show you a picture of the guy that invented podcasting to just totally dispel this myth right now. <laughs> <Not to say. laughs> hmm. Sometimes stereotypes actually fit. Problem with podcasting, there's too many men in podcasting, not enough women. When you look at blogging, there are 51% of bloggers today, or 50.9% of bloggers today are women versus 49. So there's more women bloggers than men podcasters. I remember reading an article, it was back right around the election of 2004, and blogging had gotten mainstream. And they were all saying, oh, blogging got mainstream because of the election and politics. And I read this one article that I, that I always remember, just can't remember who wrote it, and he said, blogging got mainstream when 42% of women, it was over 40% of women, were blogging. He said that's when blogging became mainstream, was when you had more people that were creating the content, or almost as many people creating content were women as men. Today, for podcasting, people that are creating podcasts, women, 12.5%. <coughs> that's the number of women, and, and that's not a survey, that's off of the Libsyn survey, went through 10,000 names that are in Libsyn that are registered users, 12.5% of their names in Libsyn are female. 
87.5. Now you go, oh, well, that's just looking well. We are the biggest podcast host, so it's a pretty significant number. And there have been two surveys that have been done in the past, one in 2005 by uh, Monash University and another one at a German university in, in 2007. And in those two surveys, they found 13% 14% were female. So this 12.5 coincides with what was seen in the past. The number of women in podcasting has not increased. Um, some may say, why is that? I think LC probably had the best uh, reasoning that I could think of was because a lot of these mommy bloggers, it's easy to blog throughout the day when you have the kids around and it's noisy, but it's harder to podcast. Now, my next session that I'm going to do about how to podcast with your iPad, I think that helps, especially for women. You can do the podcast on your iPad, carry it around room to room, do your podcast, pause it, continue, and, and make it really <coughs> So I think some of the technical reasons behind that are now going on. I don't have to do this slide. Does everyone know what podcasting is? Does anyone not understand podcasting? I know I've gotten in this far. And anyone not understand it? Don't be embarrassed if you don't know. Okay. Then I'm just going to go through this slide really fast and just say, um, skip through this. Podcasting is all about, you know, person creating content, getting on iTunes, zooming it. This is slide is for people who want to really think so. Oh, I'll get to that. The key thing about podcasting is people can create, watch, and listen where you want, when you want, how you want. It's not streaming. It's not radio. When you're in the car on your radio and you drive to work and you listen to the guy in the, on the radio and you turn the radio off, he doesn't stop the show and wait for you to get out of work or out of the grocery store. No. But podcasting does stop, and that's part back to the, the loyalty of, of why people love it. But I think one of the big things about podcasting that's changed in the last few years is this part here, smartphones. People can now get smart uh, podcasts directly on their smartphones with apps, and I think that's really kind of changed things in the last couple of years. Uh, the other thing people may not realize here, when you podcast, iTunes is a big place where you find the podcast. iTunes hosts zero podcasts. The media files are not hosted on iTunes. You have to have a third-party host to host the media files. That's where Libsyn comes in. Um, there's other places you can host, but again, Libsyn's the biggest. Uh, I'm biased to Libsyn. I've been using them for seven, over seven and a half years myself. Uh, but you have to host media files somewhere else. iTunes does not host media files for you. Podcasting is easy. Anyone can do a podcast. Can you show me an example? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Counting Podcast, the one podcast where you can come to listen to me count. So, uh, this episode, we're going to be starting off this is the first episode uh, with numbers one through 500. So, hope you guys enjoy. And uh, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Wow, well, I'm not going to go to five. Um, <laughs> but he does. And he, he actually had multiple episodes. I think mean, he got further in his episodes. He'd have numbers that were sponsored by people. And he'd say, okay, and this number was sponsored by such and such, and he'd get money from that. And he was a college kid, a medical student, and he was raising money to go to a missionary work in Africa. So, I mean, it was for a good cause. And, and as much as you want to laugh about his podcast, he got featured on iTunes on the front page. Not many other people can say that. Uh, but just because anyone can podcast doesn't mean anyone should podcast. You should have some content that's of value to the listener. Uh, another example of this is, how many people know of Starbucks? You've heard of Starbucks, everyone, many people probably here are addicted to Starbucks, maybe even have a Starbucks card, or even there's a Starbucks right here. Uh, <laughs> so let me play you the clip. This is from the actual podcast of Starbucks, and it's not a joke, this is not a spoof, this is their podcast. Let me play you. In the actual cupping stage, is you dip the, the spoon in, basically taking as much on the spoon, and then you're going to slurp the coffee. And when you slurp, what's going to happen is that coffee is going to atomize or it's going to kind of spray around the inside of your mouth, coating the entire inside of your mouth. What this is going to do is it's going to help get that flavor up in your nasal cavity and uh, help you taste the coffee very thoroughly. Now, you remember what back to that aroma? Is it translating what you're going to taste now? And then we do spit out the coffee simply because it helps to kind of keep the palate cleansed. Always thinking about the aroma, the acidity, the body, the overall flavor, and the complexity of how long the coffee stays in your mouth. The 
the first top hair in their case today. <laughs> Columbia and Rita Soprano. And the next coffee in Kenya. Medium to high acidity, medium body, and then French roast. Very roasty, very dark. It is the darkest coffee that we do offer, and it's known for that very big smoky flavor. Thanks for listening, everybody. Tune in next time for Coffee Conversations on Tuesday, September 12th. To automatically download this program, subscribe to the audio series at www.starbucks.com. I saw a few of you cringe when he was spitting. Um, if you thought that sounded bad on those speakers up front of the room, Picture it in the middle of your head. How offensive that sounds. Um, they didn't know their audience. They didn't know their medium. That podcast, while the content was probably really exemplary, if you are a Starbucks executive, when they presented it to the Starbucks executives, because uh, this was in an ad agency that created this for, a marketing agency that created this for Starbucks, um, while the CEOs and the head of Starbucks might go, oh yeah, of course you spit out the coffee and all that. Average everyday users, that's offensive. Just the thought of it, the sound of it. Um, if you're standing in line listening to that, you probably go, I'm gonna move on. Starbucks could have done a lot more with their podcast. They didn't, they, they made it too much inside Starbucks, which it, it appealed to the executives, not to the everyday people. The podcast was so universally banned, the marketing company was fired from Starbucks. So they lost their entire account over this podcast. Um, and if you Google Starbucks podcast today, you'll still find articles about how bad their podcast was. Um, I will never be able to find a better clip than that to show a bad example. I've been using it for years. Um, so my recommendation for you, if you're going to be doing a podcast for a client, is understand who the end users are. Not the client, but understand who they want to sell to, who they're trying to convey the image to. And understand the medium. I mean, understand the personalization of the medium that people are going to be going and listening to this, for the most part, on earbuds and headphones in the middle of their head. The question is, who's out there podcasting? A lot of comedians today are podcasting. Joe Rogan, uh, from Pure Factor, or any MMA fans from Joe, Adam Carolla, uh, Kevin Smith, Mark Marin, these are some of the bigger names on the comedy side. Uh, Rich Eisen, the NFL, has their own podcast. This is content, this isn't repurposed content. This is content the NFL is creating specifically as a podcast. Uh, Guitar Center has a podcast, Lego has a podcast. So for all you blockheads out there. Uh, this day and age, Slate has a whole slew of podcasts. Cliffcast, actually had Cliffcast, that was my breakfast this morning. Cliffcast had, well not the podcast, but Cliff Bar. Uh, Cliffcast has a five or the Cliff Class is their podcast. Uh, Duct Tape Marketing, really good marketing one, which is an example of a guy who took his built his brand up um, from his podcast. And then Harvard Business Review has podcasts. So there's a lot of people. Now why are these different people podcasting? Different reasons, different folks. Uh, some are doing it because it's a really cheap way to get out content. There's no restrictions. The, the comedians love it. There's no government restrictions. They can say anything they want. I joked earlier that our ticker symbol is FU. Well, we have 95% of the comedy podcasts on iTunes. So, I mean, it makes sense for us to be FU, right? Um, return on influence is a big one. ROI, people say our return on investment. Well, podcasting a lot of times is return on influence. Mark Marin, uh, I'll play a clip here from him in a second with him talking about how he built up his brand from the podcasting. Um, some people do it to improve an image, create an image, change an image. Um, politicians, I used to be the podcast consultant for Senator John Edwards. Didn't work so well. Uh, yeah, especially since I turned down Senator Obama at the time uh, to, work, to stay working with Edwards. Yeah, good call, Rob. Uh, um, but yeah, it, <laughs> Some people do that you know, to help their image. Uh, I don't think there's any help on that. Word that is. So again, why are people podcasting? I'll play, this is a clip that Mark Marin did at South by Southwest interview uh, with Forbes talking about it. His podcast. Is, where does the podcast figure in 
Mark Barron Inc. Is it the central supporting pillar, or is it more of a decorative column? Well, no. I mean, we never we didn't have any expectations that in going into it. I you know I was uh, strapped for money and and in a low point in my life. And my uh, a guy who I worked with on radio for years, uh, for as a producer, he we partnered up and we started doing it. So we didn't have a business in mind, but as the numbers started to grow and it became popular, we started to feel stupid that we didn't have a business in mind. And certain things started to happen. We tried certain things, and just through trial and error and and taking risks, you know, we we sort of established a business out of it through a bunch of different revenue streams. Because in order for a podcast to remain uh, to grow, it needs to be free. So we had to get enough of the catalog. To, to, like, at this point, the most recent 50 are always free. And what eventually started to happen was we started with donations, and then as our numbers grew, we got some advertisers, and then we were going to start selling specific episodes. We picked, we figured out a, we had a pay site, and then we wanted to sell them on iTunes. And right when we started to partner up with an aggregator to sell certain episodes on iTunes, uh, we, we partnered up with the server to make an app. So now we have an app. So now there's several different revenue streams you know the apps are doing well in order to listen to the older episodes you have to have an app uh, upgrade you know the app is free but you have to upgrade premium you can stream all 200 uh, but you always get the most recent 50 and because you know we're doing about 700 8,000 downloads a week 700,000 800,000 you know our advertisers become good and you know we're getting some of the older terrestrial advertisers from radio but there's also people like um you know, Sub Pop Records, Merge Records, uh, Independent Television, HBO, uh, Adult Swim, Comedy Central, we're going to deal with. Uh, people like to have the uh, Yeah. Mark, look, let's put this perspective of what podcasting has meant to Mark Merritt. When he, before he started podcasting, his manager said to him, I can't book you in any more comedy gigs. Your comedy career is over. He goes, you need to find a different career. I'm sorry, no one will book you. I can't get you jobs at any comedy clubs anywhere. So he said at this point in his life, he had two choices, was to get into podcasting or put a rope over the beam in his garage and just end it. Luckily, he chose to try podcasting. Mark went from not being able to be booked to last year, he was the keynote speaker at the Comedy Festival in Montreal, which is the biggest comedy event in the world. So he went to being the top of the top in the comedy world from his podcast. And he'll tell you 100% it came out of the podcast. That's where he got today from that. And he also mentioned you know, monetization, how do you make money? That's always a big question here. A lot of people get into podcasts and one of the first questions they'll ask me, I remember getting an email one time, and it started out, it goes, hi, I'm a 13-year-old girl. Well, okay, that's never the way you want to see an email start because you're always worried about what might happen after that. But I'm a 13-year-old girl, and I want to get into podcasting. How do I make money at it? And you know, I'm like, okay, that's the worst first question you can actually ask. If you're looking to get into podcasting to make money, and I'm going to show you some numbers here, most people are never going to make money podcasting. I'll tell you that right off the bat. And when I say most, I mean 90% of the people that get into podcasting are not going to make money podcasting. So if you're getting into it just to generate revenue, not probably the best thing in the world. I always think the best reason to get into podcasting is one, because you want to do it, and two, you want to separate yourself from the from the rest of the world, the world and blogging. But Mark got into it, just you know, he want, he just wanted to do something different. He had basically his last dance and help build his brand. All right. So if we look now, we get into some pie charts. So some stats. This is some of the behind-the-scenes stuff in podcasting. Back in, 19, in 2006, there was a survey that was done with a whole bunch of 20,000 podcast listeners, and they asked them how they consumed their podcasts. 41% of the time were consuming the podcasts on an MP3 player. So mind you, this is before the iPhone, before smartphones really took off. And 56% were consuming them on the computer. All of those podcasts were downloaded on the computer at that point in time. We move forward. Now we've moved into a little bit into the smartphone era. From May 2010 to May 2012, 65% of the downloads were on computer, 35% were on a smartphone, directly to the smartphone. And in August, that number is up to 43% of the downloads are on the smartphone. People are still syncing up podcasts and listening on MP3. So the majority of people, when they consume your podcast, they're doing it in a mobile environment. 
This means you have a chance to get them when they're in the car, when they're working out, when they're running on the, they're uh, riding their bike, uh, even for the crazy ones that are swimming with uh, waterproof, waterproof Bluetooth. Um, there is so much more time for people to consume podcasts when they're mobile than there is obviously to read. Now, where are smartphone downloads happening? Because that's you need to understand where they're happening. It was May 2010 to 2012, 92% here is green, that's iOS. 5% was Android, 4% Blackberry. Fast forward to August of 2012, and that number is now 88% for iOS, 11% for Blackberry, uh, Android, and 1% for Blackberry. 8 to 1 ratio iOS to Android, even though there's more Android devices. So it's still being consumed more on, on iOS. Now, for you Android people, don't get offended. I mean, I don't mean to throw Android under the bus here. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Uh, and this is going to be in general, but I had a realization early on trying to figure out why these numbers were the way they were. And essentially, the majority of people, in general, buy an Android or get an Android phone because they want to make phone calls, they want to do emails, that's about it. When people are looking for a phone to do more than phone calls, they get an iOS device, in general. Now, there's some power users here are going to say, oh, well, that's not true, I have, an, I have this do, and I root it, and I do that. Yeah, but you're on the way end of the bell curve. Uh, I did a keynote at PodCamp Topeka, and I basically said the similar thing, and someone tweeted, Rob just said, you know, I actually at the time I said, well, most people just get these cheap Android phones because when they sign up for the plan, that's where most of the Android people come from. So someone tweeted, Rob just said Android users are cheap. No, I, they're cheap. I, no, I'm not saying Android users are cheap. I'm saying the majority of Android users get cheap Android phones. That's just the way it is. Uh, and the majority of them are not consuming podcasts. And they're not doing a lot of other things. And, and here's some stats to kind of back that up. Uh, Average app downloads, 2 to 1 ratio iOS to Android, 8 to 1 on the podcast downloads, 3.25 to 1 on web traffic on iOS versus Android. Uh, when you get into mobile game revenue, iOS versus all small, all the other platforms is 84% to 16%, and a 9 to 1 ratio on mobile sales, that's where people have bought stuff from their uh, mobile device, uh, iOS to Android. So, you need to understand as a podcaster that most of your consumption is going to happen on the mobile side, and most of that mobile consumption is going to happen on an iOS device. That's just the way it is today. Hopefully in the future it'll be easier on Android. Uh, Google's, unfortunately, Google stopped in June, uh, July. Google stopped supporting podcasting. They, they yanked their podcast app. They used to have a podcast app. They pulled it. At the same time, Apple introduced their own podcast app and is better supporting it. Microsoft supports podcasts um, on Windows uh, 7 with the uh, Zoom, and BlackBerry has a podcast catcher. So the four major mobile platforms, the only one that actually doesn't have a native podcaster catching device right now is Android. So something has to be done there, but for the time being, understand uh, I iOS is your friend as a podcaster. Computer downloads. Some interesting stats here. This is where it was from May to, uh, May, to May from 2010 to 2012. 66% uh, went to iTunes. That number dropped down to 58%. Um, some of the reason that iTunes dropped in August, uh, there was an increase here, a little bit on the web browsers, but there's a big increase here on other, from 3% to 11%. That increase on other is Facebook. And the reason why there was this increase in Facebook was in this period of time, we weren't really on Lipson pushing Facebook, but now we've, at the end of May in this time period, we rolled out a Facebook app plus, which goes, if you have a Facebook fan page, the app goes right on your fan page, and we also have on publish to Facebook. So we've actually seen a big increase from Facebook because of the tools we put in place. So if you are on Libsyn and you have a Facebook page and you haven't done the on Facebook or the on published to Facebook, you really need to. And if you're thinking of podcasting, it's a really good reason why you choose Libsyn. We also do on published to WordPress and Blogger and Twitter too. Um, 
And then uh, user agent downloads, uh, again, I, Apple, all Apple tools here, 73%. And then we look at that 73 drop to 68. Again, the big difference here is the other. And that 5%, again, comes back to Facebook. So that was the bigger change there. But the biggest thing you should take out of this is still 68% the majority is controlled by Apple. And app, when, when you talk about Apple, you're talking about iTunes. So if you want your podcast to succeed, you need to understand how iTunes works. It's just like if you want your blog to succeed, you need to know how Google Analytics or Google Search works. You need to understand how iTunes works. To get For people to find your podcast in iTunes, there's three places they can find your podcast. They can find it in the top charts, they can find it via search, or they can find it in a category. Um, category is not much you can do there. Uh, just make sure you're in the right category. You don't want to be in the automotive category if your podcast is about cooking. You want to make sure your show is in the right category. Don't go, oh, well, this category doesn't have much content in it, so I'll put myself in the category where there isn't much, thinking I'll move up. That's not the way to work. Yeah, you want to put yourself in the right category. Um, there's also these featured places in iTunes. There's nothing you can really do to get yourself featured in iTunes. There's two guys that run it. They pick each week what shows get featured. But I can tell you what you can do not to get featured, and that's have ugly artwork. You will never, ever get featured in iTunes if your artwork looks like crap, because Apple is about the aesthetics. You want to get featured in iTunes, you better have good looking artwork. It has to be 1400 by 1400 pixel image, JPEG or PNG. That is a requirement by Apple. If your artwork doesn't look good, if it looks like you threw it together in two minutes on sketch uh, book, you're not going to get featured. So make sure you have to look at artwork. No. I mentioned earlier, I talked about audio podcasts more than video, and here's a reason why. This was a screenshot, top 60 episodes that were downloaded in that, uh, that were um, running in iTunes on 524. First 58 of them, of the 60, were audio. It wasn't until you got to 59.60 that you hit a video podcast. Typically, when you look through the top 200 list of episodes that are in iTunes, 95 to 96% of those are audio. iTunes has become very audio-centric. And the reason, part of the reason is YouTube. A lot of people just do go over and put their video on YouTube. Now, I also look at this as an opportunity for video people. Because of YouTube is where everyone goes with their video, not a lot of people are putting their video up on, uh, on iTunes these days. If they just do, okay, Pittsburgh Dad, perfect example, is up on YouTube, he doesn't have a podcast. There's a lot of people that have YouTube blocked at work. They can't consume podcasts at work. The U.S. Army blocks YouTube at many of the military installations. So we have this podcast that used to be with us, it was called Hot for Words. Uh, Marina, she talked about the etymology of words, and she was a Russian, had a great accent, and a very low-cut, skimpy outfit. Um, perfect for YouTube. Uh, but she had people complaining that were in the military, they couldn't get her content because it was blocked by YouTube was blocked. So if you're doing video, you may want to think about getting back, because there is the opportunity, because a lot of people have kind of ignored video. So there are these top 100 lists in iTunes. And, and people go, well, you know, I'll never break in the top. you got all these people. iTunes has actually made it a pretty fair system. Their top 100 is not the top 100 of all time. So a lot of times people go, well, I'm a, oh, my show is the top 100 in iTunes for that period of time. It, and it's a weak period of time. So iTunes top 100 is based on the top uh, 100 shows on new subscribers in the last seven days with a weighted average for the last one day, two days, three days. If the, if for the really geeky ones of you in the audience, the actual algorithm is this. Uh, the first four days, uh, the first day times four, second day times three, third day times two, then the fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, divide that by 13 to get some number, and that's how everything gets sorted. What's important to understand, well, let me just show you just some little proof on that. Uh, that Apple used to use this algorithm for their app. Their app sales, they actually changed it on the app sales, but they've left it the same on podcast. Uh, this was the raw data for my app sales to the TII app. This was where my ranking was. When you take this algorithm and apply it to the raw numbers, you got this, which is basically an inverse of what my ranking was. So you can actually see the proof that that is really the algorithm that works. 
why this is important is if you have a new podcast, you can get into the top 100 list. If you put all your marketing effort together, don't say, okay, I'm going to market, I'm going to do a little bit of promotion here on one weekend and the next weekend I'll do a little bit more. The following weekend I'll do a little bit more. Think of everything you want to do to promote your podcast when you launch and do it all at one time. One big push. You have an email list, send out an email blast. Send out the blast with the link to your podcast and iTunes. You, on your blog, put up blog posts on Twitter, on Facebook, on Google+, Pinterest, every place you can think of, get the word out about your podcast at one time. Do a major blast. That will push you up in the ranks. And when it pushes you up into the ranks, it gives a chance for other people to see you and discover you that wouldn't have known about you, and that's kind of just helps you move along. How iTunes search works. This is complicated, so bear with me here. The title, um, and then the title, and then the title, and the title, <laughs> and then, oh, and then sorted by the number of subscribers all time. But it's really important about what you put in the title. Uh, I had a, a friend, he had a podcast that was hosted with us. His podcast was called The Fifth Race Podcast. Anyone want to guess what The Fifth Race Podcast was about? Anyone here a Stargate fan? Who have watched the show Stargate? In Stargate, there was a uh, offer a reference to the fifth race, which was this other race of beings. I'm a big Stargate fan. I missed that. I wouldn't have gone to iTunes and searched for a fifth race. I would have gone to our iTunes and searched for Stargate. I said to Justin, just change your title of your podcast to Stargate. Um, a fifth race podcast or a fifth race a fifth, a fifth race podcast a Stargate podcast just put Stargate in your title he did that one little change within a week when you search for Stargate his podcast was number one before when you search for Stargate he didn't even show up even though he had it in his keywords and his description it doesn't matter in iTunes what matters is the title here's an example uh, it's hard to read in this but if you search for iPhone apps iOS iPad iPod touch or iPhone podcast my show shows up number one. The title of my podcast is Today an iOS Podcast. That's my show. The unofficial iOS, iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, news, and iPhone apps podcast. That's in the title. <laughs> what you put in the title of your show in iTunes doesn't have to be what you call your show. Now, don't be Spanish and do your show dash keyword, 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 keyword. Make it a little less obvious. So, <laughs> Think about the two, three, or four top keywords that you would pay Google AdSense for. Get them in the title of your show. If, you're, if you already have a podcast and you're not doing this, you will see amazing results within one week. Do a search for what you think is. See where your show is right now. Change your title a little bit. Within a week, you will see. It takes about a week. Within around a week, you will see huge change in your show's results in iTunes. And that, if you do that, it really will help your show. Now, I mentioned... Um, Wrong I mentioned that it was title and then total number of subscribers all time. One of the biggest mistakes people make, and by people I mean consultants that say they know what they're doing and they don't, um, is when they set up a podcast for you or for a client, um, they'll put these little buttons in here and they'll have this little iTunes button and they'll put a link and they'll put this little ITPC link. And this little ITPC link is because these consultants think they know what they're doing. They think they're being clever, which is when you click on this link with ITPC, it automatically subscribes your podcast in the person that clicked on it, iTunes on their computer. So they click it once, they're subscribed to your podcast. That sounds great in theory, and it's really easy for the, for the end user. It bypasses the iTunes counting system. So every person that clicks and subscribes to your podcast this way does not get counted by Apple. So you miss out on any benefit you would have in their algorithms for new subscribers and all-time subscribers, which is really important for search. Give the link to the iTunes page. Now some people go, oh, but I just want to make it easy for the end user. Bullshit. Sorry. You want to get more subscribers. And the best way to get more subscribers is to get moved up in the iTunes ranks because iTunes is the place. Make your subscribers click one more time. If they can't do two clicks to subscribe to your podcast, they're, they're not going to stick around anyway. Uh, so give them the link to iTunes. 
And to get that link, by the way, it's really simple. Find your show in iTunes, right click on your image, and copy link. That's, the, that's how you find your link in iTunes. Yes? Can you do a tiny URL for that link? Probably. It should work, yeah. Yeah, and you can do that at the time. Right, if you're going to tweet it, yeah. yeah. That should work. It'll still redirect out to the iTunes page. The key thing is getting people to iTunes to subscribe to your podcast. I mean, I, I can't stress it enough, and I can't tell you how many times I come across websites that have been done by quote unquote these professionals that have that iTunes link. Like, it's the worst thing for you as the podcaster to have that. Because it, it just it hurts you, it really does hurt you in Apple. You go all this work to get people to subscribe to your podcast, and then you don't even get the credit for a night. Um, oh, you can't get it in here. Talk about numbers. Here. I'll play this clip. Many of you might need to know how volcanoes work. Volcanoes are caused by packs of vibrating waters <laughs> as they pass underneath the earth, heading east for the long weekend. They startle the mountain fish who kicks up a right fuss, spewing a hot load from its blowhole. The mountain fish, however, is often touched and can be placated with a volcano cocktail. That's a clip from Tiki Bar TV. How many people here were Pi Camp 1? Okay, it's a few of us. I was here for Pi Camp 1. This is my first time. Uh, at Pi Camp 1, Dr. Tiki was here. And his podcast is a video podcast, which basic premise was there's a problem, and at the end of the episode, the problem is solved with alcohol. So this basic theory is any problem can be solved with alcohol. Um, but that clip is about don't believe everything you're told on the internet, um, and don't believe everything you're told by people that talk about their stats. When they talk about podcasting stats, pretty much everyone lies. They lie bad. Um, the story I love to tell is there was a podcaster running around a little over five years ago saying, I get 60,000 downloads from my podcast per episode. I get 60,000, and he's beating his chest, and I'm like, man, this show sucks. There is no way this guy gets 60,000 downloads for his podcast. First day on the job at Libsyn, I got in to figure out, I asked how to see stats. I went and looked at his podcast, 600 downloads per episode. So he's out there telling people he's getting this number. He, is, he was basically making people feel bad about their own stats when he was really lying through his teeth. I've had people email me say, I started my podcast a month ago. I'm getting 1,000 downloads a month, uh, an episode. What am I doing wrong? I have to ask those people, what did you do to get there? That's a really good number. Um, let me just give you an example of some numbers. These are podcasting stats based on episodes that were, that were downloaded or put up live in the month of September on Libsyn. So I looked at all the new episodes that went up in the month of September, and I pulled the numbers as of Thursday. 50% of the episodes that went live uh, in the month of September had at least 170 downloads. So we go back, three subscribers for podcasts on average, 170 downloads per episode for podcasts. So bloggers, three, podcasters, 170. So that's one nice thing. 22% of podcasts, so the top 22% got a thousand downloads per episode. So again, back to the guy, thousand. He was doing something right. Top 10% of podcasters, 4,300, uh, almost 4,400 downloads per episode. 5,000. I put in this number here. This is the magic number. This is the number where I think if you want to monetize with advertising, this is kind of where you need to be. That top tier. Are those professional podcasts like the people that? This is a, this is on know. Lipson. This is everybody on right. Lipson. I'm saying, is it, does it tend to be like the professional comedians and the, the news organizations and the things it, like that? It's I mean, a it's mix. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's a mix. There is. I would say there, it's a mix between the average guys and the professionals. And there are some professionals that are below these numbers. There's news people here that are below this number. Uh, that are below this number. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some that are below that, but this here is a mixture, and this is the number that you ideally want to be at. That, I mean, people say, what's the goal? Where do you want to be? Well, if you want to monetize, you want to do advertising, this is the goal you're looking for, 5,000. That starts to make sense. At 5,000, with the CPM advertising, then it starts to make sense where you can make a little bit of money. Not quit your day job money. You need to get higher than that. Uh, top 5%, 11,000, and the top 1%, uh, 54,000, and when you get in the, in the above this here group, 
this then becomes more of the comedians, um, more of the professionals, but there are still independent guys here. Uh, people that are just putting up podcasts, like uh, Dan Carlin and people like that, are just doing it from their house, doing a really good show, um, are not comedians in any way, shape, or form. That just started out as podcasters. One thing is you want to make sure when you do your podcast that you get it out into all the different directories. Um, I have a directory on my podcast, podcast for all, on website, podcastforall.com. The directory of directories, it has a link to the different, there's 173 different podcast directories, only about 50 of them are still active, and I have links to all the active ones, and all the ones that are dead are in red at the bottom, and I have snarky comments about why they died. Um, and, and I try to keep it up to date, it was actually updated last night to mention that Zoom submission is currently offline and you actually need to email rob at zoom.net if you want to get your podcast into the Zoom directory now. They actually are in the midst of redoing stuff at Zoom. Uh, hopefully they'll get a, a submission page back. Earlier I mentioned that social media is your weapons and in, uh, you know it, it's what you need out there, uh, ammunition. Unfortunately some people believe in this spray and pray. How many people saw the movie Terminator? Oh, well, actually, yeah, that's right, I'm sorry, Predator, Predator, different Arnold movie, okay. In the movie Predator, there's a scene where the guy's got this huge Gatling gun and he's firing it into the jungle. He's not getting anything. He's just firing, he's missing, and there's other people firing machine guns. They're spraying and praying, they're not getting anything. There's podcasters out there. Look at some of these numbers, 75,000 tweets, 44,000 tweets, 15,000 tweets, uh, 26,000 tweets. I love this one here, 81,000 tweets. Now, I'm going to give you something. 81,000 tweets at 100 characters per tweet, that's 8.1 million characters. The King James Bible, 3.1 million characters. This guy has tweeted out the King James Bible <laughs> over two and a half times. <laughs> so nobody has that much interesting stuff to say. Even God didn't have that much stuff he interesting to say. And, and he took, what, 6,000 years to do it. Um, depending on which people you believe. Uh, now, he's got 35,000 followers, right? When he puts out an episode, how many downloads do you think he gets per episode? Less than 500. Twitter followers do not equal podcast subscribers. There is not a correlation between Twitter followers and podcast followers and podcast subscribers. There is between Facebook likes and, and downloads, but there is not. I mean, we've looked at, uh, and we, me, I geeked out and looked at podcasters that host with us, and I looked at their Twitter followers, and I looked at how many downloads they get, and there is no correlation. We have people that get 200,000 downloads an episode, they have 2,000 Twitter followers. We have other people that have 30,000, 81,000. This guy here, 81,000? Less than 200 downloads an episode. He, this guy drives Elsie nuts, because Elsie has to follow our lips and feed, and he's always showing up in the feed. Uh, and, and this is his other podcast. He's got two like Twitter accounts. What I said to this guy, and I'm friends with him, and, and I won't give out his full name, but I said, Mike, why don't you stop putting out or spewing out content on tweet, or Twitter, and put some good podcast content out, spend some time actually working on doing good content, because at the end of the day, what's going to get you subscribers to your podcast is really good content in the podcast. Let your listeners send out the tweets about your podcast. Ask your listeners to do that for you. Don't you spend your time. Finally, Wrap it up here. I mentioned that this is kind of a war with the new media, old media, and in the war, I kind of look at bloggers like your infantry in the in the trenches. What does that make podcasters? Ah, special ops, baby. We're that we're that little group. We're that niche. We have a little bit more swag and a little bit more influence with our listeners than bloggers have with theirs. Uh, readers. So if you really want to stand out, do you want to be the guy in the trench or do you want to be the guy repelling down from the helicopter? So I don't uh, Promo code will get you a free month here with Lipson, PCP, GH7, uh, and that'll get you a free month. So if you sign up now, it'll actually get the rest of this month and uh, November. You have until November 15th. If you wait until November 2nd, I'm not saying this out loud, but if I did say it out loud, I'd say if you wait until November 2nd and you signed up, you'd actually get all of November and December free. Because the way it works is, uh, you sign up now, you get into, you won't have to pay until December first. You sign up November second, you'll uh, get until uh, you won't have to pay until January first. So, Lipson.com. That's my email. 
and I have to run down to another room. Uh, any questions while I'm packing up? Come on. Yeah. What do you find statistically is the best rate to do podcasts? Like five days a week, one day a week? What's the that, that is, that is, I consider that one of the better first questions that's often asked. Um, I would say you want to be consistent, you want to release on a consistent basis. Uh, if you can do daily, that's fine. Five days a week is fine. Mac OS Ken's a perfect example of a very good daily podcast. But other than that, you want to be weekly. You really do want to be weekly, and you want to be weekly the same day and roughly the same time. I mean, you watch people in this country, and that's where most podcast downloads come from, are trained in a weekly manner. They're trained to watch television shows the same time each week. Um, yes, some people now are using TiVo and doing all that stuff, but the majority of people still could tell you when Lost was on, they could tell you exactly what day of the week and what time Lost came on. Uh, I could tell you the X-Files used to be on Friday night. Well, it used to be another night, and then they moved it to Friday night, which sucked. Um, but, you know, you people, by and large, get in this rut, and you want to be in their rut. You want to be where they say, okay, I'm driving to work on Tuesday morning, and I'm going to listen to your podcast on Tuesday morning, and then I'm going to listen to this other guy's podcast on Tuesday on the drive home from work. Um, and the other question people also want to ask, and I know someone's probably going to ask this, how long should a podcast be? Uh, perfect answer is, how many Star Wars episode one? Want Star Wars episode one? Okay, 15 minutes of content spread over two hours. Bad thought, bad bad execution. If you have 15 minutes of content, you have 15 minute podcast. You have 17 minutes of content, you have 17 minute podcast. You don't say, oh, I'm gonna make my podcast 32 minutes every episode, or 24 minutes every episode. You do what you have content for that week. You may have a goal. I have a goal on my show of Today in iOS of 35 minutes. That's my goal for each episode, to be about 35 minutes. I know when I hit 35 minutes, I can stop doing my show. My average show is about an hour to hour and 10. Um, because I usually have a lot of feedback from listeners. So, uh, you know, make it where you have the right amount of content. Other questions? Wow, so that was the next question from everybody. See? <laughs> <laughs>